Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Mass Effect. In the last episode, we concluded Morden's loyalty mission, Old Blood, in which we dealt with a former associate of his and the kind of data that he was gathering somewhat unethically on curing or the modified version of the genophage. This episode, we will be dealing with Grunt. Grunt has been feeling awful aggressive and angry of late. Various Krogans have said he needs the right. Let's speak to Rex about what exactly that involves. Shepard, what can I do for you, my friend? I have a Krogan on my crew. He has some kind of sickness and needs treatment. Where are you from, Welp? Was your clan destroyed before you could learn what is expected of you? I have no clan. I was tank bred by Warlord Okir. My line distilled from Kredok, Moro, Shiagar. You recite warlords, but you are the offspring of a syringe. I am pure Krogan. You should be in awe. Okir is a very old name. A very hated name. He is dead. Of course. You're with Shepard. How could he be alive? I need Grunt back up to speed. What's wrong with him? There's nothing wrong with him. He's becoming a full adult. Ah, puberty ritual. Common among species with hormone-driven reproductive urges. I don't care what aliens call it. Krogan undergo the rite of passage. Too far, Rex. Your clan may rule, but this thing is not Krogan. Idiot. So, Grunt, do you wish to stand with Erdnot? What does the rite of passage require? Not for me to say, Shepard. The shaman will discuss that. You'll let a tank-bred Krogan join Clan Erdnot? Only because he's with you. After all, you and I killed thousands like him. Not quite as big, but many. Clan Erdnot is strong, and the others will do as I say. They see the benefit of my vision. What happens if he doesn't do this rite of passage? If he was left here, he would be killed. The clanless are not respected. A tank bred, probably more so. His disposition is what it is, right or no. That's just him being a Krogan. Okir didn't tell you that in the tank. Did he, boy? This is his choice. It is in my blood. It is what I am for. Good boy. Speak with the shaman. He's over on the second level. Give him a good show and he'll set you on the path. You too, Shepard. How many times have you stepped in a mess for your crew, hmm? I need to go. We'll go over this another time. Hunt well, Shepard. So, I should talk at this point about Rex. What happens if you haven't got Rex? Um, because Rex can absolutely die during Vermeer in Mass Effect 1. If you haven't got Rex, he's replaced with a wonderful, in inverted commas, character called Erdnot Reeve, who is much more traditionalist. He hasn't got Rex's vision. He wants to have Erdnot as the strongest clan, but by pure dominance. And a lot of things are a lot more difficult because of that. He's a real piece of shit, and that has effects that carry through both this game and Mass Effect 3. Believe me, you want Rex around, not just because of Shepard's background with him, but just because he's a lot more of a progressive, flexible Krogan, whereas... Reeve is extremely inflexible. There's a couple of guys here, and the Nakmore Ambassador. Don't turn back, human. I may be an ambassador among my people, but that doesn't mean I have to speak to the likes of you. Don't think that carrying this whelp of a Krogan makes you worth my time. Leave now before my guards decide to reject you. You seem like a well-traveled Krogan ambassador. I am. Then you must know who I am. And you have to be aware that bad things happen to those who oppose me. Stand down, men. I'm starting to like this human. I am the ambassador to Erdnot from Clan Nakmor. We're a small clan based in the Kratic Wastes. If Nakmor is a small clan, 
How do you keep the more powerful clans from destroying you? We are the clan of the great warlord Nakmor Krall, who faced down platoons of Turians and won. Most clans lend us the respect our ancestor is due. What business does Clan Nakmor have with the Erdnot? Clan leader Rex requested that I come. He and Clan Nakmor have been in talks about a more permanent alliance. With our help, Erdnot could rally others behind its banner and truly unite Tuchanka. And we would gain the chance to fight in larger battles with greater plunder. I thought all Krogan want to be warriors. What makes a Krogan become an ambassador? Huh. You don't know as much as you think, human. A Krogan diplomat has to represent the strength of his people, or his clan appears ripe for conquest. I slaughtered my way to the top of my clan, human. I speak with the authority of a warrior. I should go. I'm sure you are needed elsewhere. I think that gives a really interesting insight that it's like, why become an ambassador? <laughs> an ambassador is showing off the strength of his Kroger and you're like a kind of warrior of words. And it's a really like Krogan way of doing it, which I think is really interesting. Anyway, here is the shaman. You go beyond yourself, Gatatag Uvank. The rights of Erdnot are dominant. How do we know it will challenge him? He's unnatural. The beasts of the right could ignore him like a lump of plastic. They know blood no matter the womb. Your barking does not help your case. I'll speak for myself. This is the tank bread. It is very lifelike. Smells correct as well. Your protests ring hollow, Uvank. Erdnot Rex has given us permission to seek clan status for Grunt. Permission? <laughs> that is good enough, if lacking in spirit. If this must stand on ritual, then I invoke a denial. My Krantz stands against him. He has no one. Mm. My patience is tested, but Uvank invokes correctly. Grunt, who is your Krant? Your allies willing to kill and die on your behalf? How is a candidate tested if he brings backup on his rite of passage? Not every Krogan can be the strongest warrior, but each must inspire his peers to battle at his side. If the ones who know you best can find nothing worthy in you, you should wander the wastes and die alone before you weaken my clan. We stand with Grunt as shipmates and comrades. Shipmates are not the same thing. But I grant you aliens your simple interpretation. Aliens don't know strength. My followers are true, Krogan. Everything about Grunt is a lie. You, you dare. <laughs> I like this human. She understands. I withdraw my denial. This will be decided elsewhere. What the hell is your issue? What have you got against Grunt? It doesn't matter if one of our own made him. He is a manipulation. He may as well be the genophage in the flesh. The genophage defines the weak. My bloodline will make us stronger. You sound like Rex, bringing radical change that threatens our core. We have gone too far already. This is about politics. You maneuver like the Citadel Council. Does your Krant also fight with words? You dare slander me in such a way? Impressive! You challenged with words, their natural weapon. And your Krant sees how your position weakens, Uvank. Shaman, you cannot decide in his favor. What about Krogan tradition if you pollute the right? You... you dare. I was a warrior before your mother was born. I speak with the authority of centuries. I decide who is worthy. That is the end of it. And I have other means to oppose this. You have provoked them. Reason enough for me to like you. They're your problem now. Is that Krogan gonna be a problem? He is forbidden to interfere. Will he? During the rite of passage, you must be ready for anything, Shepard. From what you've shown me, you will not disappoint. Do we need any special equipment? To begin the rite, 
Only the candidate and his crant are required. You love battle, don't you, Shepard? The last gasp of a dying opponent. Bring your love of the fight to Grunt's trial, and he will succeed. We're ready. Let's do this. Excellent. So, now I begin Grunt's loyalty mission, Rite of Passage. I've talked about it before briefly when we did the mission with Patriarch on Omega, but um, the idea of Krant I find really interesting, because it's another one of those things that was like, Krogan are all about the strongest, but not just in a purely so selfish, individual way. Like, you have the, the ambassador we spoke to who's like, I'm strong because I show my the strength of my clan to others. And here it's saying, I, you might not be the strongest warrior personally, but you can be strong if you inspire the loyalty of your friends, and that's kind of the, the idea of Krant, this kind of group that fight for your honour, the fact that you're inspiring them makes you strong. It's not just about pure martial physical strength, but it is always about being the strongest in some sense. Very interesting kind of Krogan politics and culture. I think it's one of the most fleshed out aspects of Mass Effect, and I think Mass Effect 2 explores it really well. Anyway, Grunt obviously has to come with us, and Morden is going to be the one I'm going to bring with us, because I'm going to stick with the whole grunt Morden duo here. We have now unlocked stuff for Morden, because he's loyal. We have now a sweet new outfit for him, which has, like, this blue trim. So we'll take that. He also now has access to Neural Shock, cripple an organic enemy with pain, and we'll level that up by one. You incapacitate your enemy for a longer time and deliver so much nerve damage, his accuracy is permanently impaired. Neural Shock is a really handy power. Just throwing it out there, I think this is literally the exact same cutscene of us in a truck that shows when you go to Morden's loyalty mission. Hmm. Anyway. This is Tachanka's most recent scar. The last surface city to fall in the rebellions. The Keystone was at the heart. It has survived wars in the passage of centuries. It endures. Like the Krogan. If you wish to join Clan Erdnot, you must contemplate the Keystone and its trials. What will happen? Who knows? You must adapt. You must thrive no matter the situation. Any true Krogan will. That seems bizarre because it fades out while it's still clearly in progress. But there's a fair few things we can do before we get started here. There is an Erdnot corpse. Basically, we need to hit the Keystone in order to start. Um, but you are really best to gather everything here, so there is heavy weapon ammo, and BAM! 101! That brings the cane up to 100%! Firing ready! Uh, and I'm excited to take that bad boy for a spin, because my goodness is it a fun, fun heavy weapon. Uh, I'm just grinning with excitement right now, because I know what's coming! Anyway, there's another Erdnot corpse here. A lot of Erdnots have tried to do this ritual, and clearly it's not gone great for them. Another one here! They all got a nice bit of dollar on them. No fourth one there, and some medi gel. Wonderful, we're all medi gelled up, I think. Six, that's our maximum capacity. Wonderful, if I've missed anything, which I have, there's another med kit here, which I'm not going to take yet. Some platinum, because I want to save that in case I actually need it for now, I have six. And some power cells, so that's us on 119, so we'll get one sweet shot out of the cane. Um, have we got all our ammunition powers on? I believe we have properly. Is the sniper on? Yes. And the pistol. Yes. Right, there is now two more things to do. There's a turbine here that we can bypass. Or we can cock the bypass up on it. That works too. That's a lie, that doesn't work. Um, but I believe there's a second turbine here which hopefully we can bypass successfully. Indeed we can, and we get a little bit of money from that. We missed the money on the other one. Anyway, let's hit the Keystone, this very scary looking device. Welcome to the first challenge of the Rite of Passage. The Varen. So you face a lot of Varen here. So this is a very obviously 
combat heavy one, it being, you know, Krogan and all. And here I'm going to briefly talk about the sci-fi nod that is the Krogan and Chukchanka. It was hinted at quite a lot in the first Mass Effect game, but it's made really clear in this. Has anyone in the audience either seen or watched the film? Well, the film slash book, Dune. Um, Dune, as in with a D, as in Sandy, Expanse. Um, there is a huge strong links between the concepts of the Krogan in Mass Effect and the concepts of the Fremen in Dune. Uh, basically, the idea on Dune is you've got this planet which is horrifying, that where everything's trying to kill you and surviving on that planet is an ordeal in and of itself. What that means is that Arrakis, the planet, is the ultimate kind of like training ground that the troops made there are amongst the best fighters and are therefore capable of overthrowing the Emperor because they're so powerful because just of the nature of the world they have grown up on. Um, and that is very much the case that they're trying to show off with Tuchanka as well, is that Tuchanka is a terrifying, horrifying place. And of course, the most powerful warrior species in the galaxy, the Krogan, came from here because they've spent their entire evolution trying to avoid being killed. Um, therefore, once you take them off to Janka, they are ridiculously powerful when they're no longer almost inhibited by having this ridiculously dangerous <laughs> kind of homeworld. Um, and that's a similar, that's kind of tied in with concepts of invasive species that you get in ecology as well, that some species that come from backgrounds where they're kind of like in a rainforest and all that are like just about struggling to get by, and then you move into another place where they, they are free from those limitations, they tend to be, oh bloody hell, that's a Varen right the fuck there, let's use Neural Shock on it. As you can see, Neural Shock, no damage, but stuns an enemy, just paralyzes them, It's great. Um, very handy to just, if you're, you're briefly paralyzed. So yeah, this, this kind of ties in with the concept of, of invasive species as well, somewhat that the Krogan start off as a, definitely kind of their, their own species in their own planet, but once, the, once they're kind of off their own planet, suddenly they are much more free to reproduce and spread way more than anyone wants, and they're kind of then seen as a threat which needs dealt with. Anyway, let's hit the keystone for round two. Well, that's a reference to the Rachni, and now some scary shit starts to turn up. Introducing Harvesters! Fortunately, we're not fighting them, though. They are just a delivery method for Klixen, which are basically the offspring of Harvesters. Don't even bother trying to target the Harvesters, you can do nothing to harm them. Klixen are obviously harder to fight than Rachni, but both are... not Rachni, but not fighting any Rachni, uh, Varen. Uh, but both are melee creatures, so with this whole trial, don't bother really even remotely focusing on um, trying to trying to do cover for now. Just because these are all melee creatures, you will just all being in cover does is really damage your own fire rate. Really, you just need to stay out in the open. You need to stay mobile as much as possible. Remember your squad mates' powers. Um, some of them, especially like Cryoblast, is great for buying you time, as is your own kind of cryo ammo. When it comes to melee creatures and you're out in the open, what you really just need to do is focus on keeping them at a distance. Um, as you can see, there is ammo basically everywhere. You're never really running low on it, so I'm just pretty much unloading constantly with the Locust and not having to worry about it. I can hear a Harvester coming in somewhere. They do make a god-awful sound. Um, oh, there's a Harvester. Um... Where is... Ah, uh, there's the Klixen that come from it. Klixen, as I said last episode, because they're kind of like fire type in a sense. They are particularly so vulnerable to ice attacks and they are particularly invulnerable to fire attacks. So things like Incinerate don't do anywhere near as much as you might expect to them. But yes, oh no, that's going to blow up. Ow. The similarities between Dune and the planet Arrakis and Krogan and the planets... Um, Tuchanka, don't just stop there as well, even just the name of the star, Aralak. Aralak, Arrakis, they're quite similar in a sense. 
But there's one large aspect of Dune that's not in common with the Krogan. Have a think about what, what that might be. What's the most famous part of Dune, if you're familiar with it? And that'll give you an idea of what's coming next episode. For now, let's kill the remaining few clicks and... Oh my god, they just they just keep on coming, you know? Um, but still, we're on. Bam. Those SMG extra rounds is possibly one of the best things I've researched. Because this thing can hold like 400 clips. Like, even if you've only got 20 in a clip, you can. I'm just offloading constantly with this thing. And it's still just keeping high up there. I think that's us done. Indeed, it is. Indeed we do, Grunt, but that is not going to be this episode. Thank you very much for watching. We're part way through the Rite of Passage. Next episode, we will continue. Yeah, I'm getting there. All right, let me do my outro, Grunt. Hope you join me next time for the rest of the Rite of Passage. Thank you very much, and good day.